Okay, I am Santiago Torres. Uh, I am a professor at Purdue University, and my college, uh, colleague, Aditya Sirish. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be talking about Intoto. Intoto is a uh, it's been in the CNCF for a couple of years now, but it's uh, always been a prescient uh, project. It's been trying to solve software supply chain security, even before solar winds, even before software supply chain security was such a large problem. So let's talk a little bit, a little bit about what we set off to solve. Um, Intoto is pretty much focused in trying to solve software supply chain attacks. Uh, we talk a lot about software supply chains nowadays. We understand that software is interconnected and that we depend on other people's work in, other to, in order to make uh, good software, right? Now, a software supply chain attack is something that, uh, even though there's not a very good definition out there, it's something that we're constantly redefining and understanding. Um, it's basically the way in which hackers try to attack the left-hand side of an equation, say, your build system, your source code repository, um, any, anything really that produces software in order to attack the consumers of the software. Essentially, the result of your build, anything that's actually consequential to your software delivery pipeline. Now, this is a slide that we update every year because they're constantly increasing. I remember when I think two years ago, we were on a cumulative 400 something percent increase in software supply chain attacks. And even though we have a lot of technologies trying to solve this problem, they keep on increasing. We still keep on seeing software supply chain attacks happen. Um, this is also a slide that we update every year, unfortunately. Um, but this is also something that as the Intoto project we've been working on for a while, which is trying to catalog and understand how software supply chain attacks take place and what shape do they take. Uh, this is a project that we donated to the CNCF tax security uh, group, I think uh, in 2019 or so. It's, even though it's not an exhaustive list, it's a very, very good resource that talks about how software supply chain attacks take place, how are they actually carried out. And well, we use this ourselves to inform the design of Intoto and in order to essentially understand the nature of a beast to try to tackle the problem. I really, really recommend looking at it. Now, from this information, well, we know that there's many uh, good solutions that came out there. Uh, you may be familiar with some of the logos here. Uh, there's things such as uh, Salsa and Tecton Chains and SPDX, uh, Software Bill of Materials in general. A lot of people are excited about projects like Wok or Skit or Sixdoor or Gitbomb. All of these things have a place in trying to tackle uh, the software supply chain problem. On the right-hand side, we also have, uh, say, policy engines. Now, in total, in, in and by itself, it's a meta framework. It's something that allows you to connect all of these pieces together and actually develop a way to verify software supply chain uh, security properties. Uh, and go back. So, for example, here, this is probably a very cartoonified version of a software supply chain, right? We have a version control system, we have a build system some living somewhere, we have probably a CI um, checking and running the tests all the time, then probably we have some packaging infrastructure, we're putting a package out there. Now, all of these things you, you do yourself, this is something you're familiar with. Now, being able to connect all of these things together, uh, to write policy, to say, well, I need a version control system with the security properties in place, I need a build system that, that needs to behave in this way. I need a packaging infrastructure that needs to be run by this individual, and it needs to be uh, behaving in this particular way. Well, that's something that you can easily express using Intoto and the semantics of Intoto to essentially tell you what's going on. Um, on, the other, on the other side, on the left-hand side of the equation, this, uh, we also have libraries that allow you to capture and express the information that you that you collect during your regular software supply chain operations. For example, the, you saw the policy earlier. It described what needed to happen um, on this particular piece of data that you can collect using Toro libraries or integrations that we're going to talk about uh, in a minute. You can start collecting these links of the supply chain, these pieces of evidence that allow you to verify the policy. For example, if you're familiar with Salsa provenance at stations, that's an Intoto predicate. That's something that you can use. 
to describe the build system in a very expressive way and write policy around it using total policies. Now, using these things collected together, then you can essentially compare, again, think about supply chains as an equation, right? What's on the left-hand side, what's supposed to happen uh, with what actually happened. You take the original uh, layout of the supply chain that you wrote using in Toto and the collected evidence, and then you contrast the two things together to check whether those things uh, match letter to letter, right? So in order to, sh in order to show the, the power of this, uh, we actually prepared a demo. Um, again, this is another very cartoonified version of a software supply chain, but I assume this is something that you're doing probably every day, right? You have a couple of colleagues, you, in this case, Bob, Alice, and Carol, they're working together to make, a, I don't know, a new release, package it, in, package, it, package it into a Docker container and release it somewhere to eventually make it a, a part of a, your cloud infrastructure. In this case, Bob will clone the repository, will uh, do a couple of changes to the code, then it will he will submit a pull request. It's going to be reviewed by Carol, and once Carol finds it appropriate, she's going to merge it, and then Alice is going to tag a release and trigger a build on a yeah, on, on a server to eventually make it into a Docker container that will eventually verify to make sure that before we uh, put it in the cloud, it's correct. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, our two students, uh, Alan and, uh, and Rui. They actually did this demo themselves. Uh, I am super impressed of all the work they did this, uh, uh, this couple of months. Should we just kick it off? So, you're going to see a lot of text. I'm going to try to explain what's going on. Uh, part, of a, part of what I like about Intoto is that if everything's working, you really don't, you're not supposed to know as an end user, but um, we're going to make it very verbose. The diagram that you saw just a second ago, cloning, changing, uh, changing some code, making a PR, and so on and so forth, is going to be verified. Every single step is going to create a link, uh, the little files that, that we showed a second ago, so that we can actually build uh, a very granular provenance graph. Let's kick it up. So first we uh, define a demo layout, which is, again, this policy of what needs to happen. We just created it. It's on uh, root layout file, uh, root.layout file. It's going to be living somewhere. You can think of this existing inside of, say, an admission controller or something of that nature. And now we're going to actually kickstart the process of uh, running over our supply chain. Uh, we did a git clone now. We are going to uh, make the changes. If you see somewhere in the middle of the screen, right where the pointer is, we use uh, Intoto to trace the process and capture a piece of evidence about cloning and changing the code. We will continue doing the same. For example, in this case, we'll, uh, we'll track the git commit. We change the code. We track what commit did it bake it into. So now we know these files are connected to this commit. Then we track which PR did, it, PR did it make it to. We say, well, this commit made it into this PR, which is going to be reviewed by somebody. And then we track as well the next person in line, Carol. She looked at the PR. She tracks the PR she looked at. And the eventual merge commit that ended up being a result of her review and um, her merge action. And now we are, yeah, now we're tagging a release. We are going to uh, build a container and we do the exact same thing. We track the, uh, the commit that eventually became a tag and then we track the tag that eventually became a container. And we build this paper trail of exactly what's going on and where the things come from. The idea is that you can create these policies and these layouts to describe an, at a very granular level how is your software supply chain supposed to, have to work? And then you can produce evidence and ask uh, your developers or your contributors to trace themselves what they're doing so that not, nowhere in between anybody's changing anything. Um, now, we run the verification, which is the last step. We take all of the evidence that we collected and we uh, compare it against the layout that we described in the beginning, which we said there needs to be a commit there needs to be a PR that needs to be reviewed. There needs to be a tag that needs to be the result of that PR. And the, there needs to be a container that's built using that tag. 
And oh, it's down for another take. Oh, this is the part of the demo where uh, we're going to, yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, essentially, we're going to show how Intoto is able to detect if someone comes in and actually tampers with that workflow we just dis uh, displayed, and maybe puts in a commit that there, that wasn't actually supposed to be there. And uh, we're going to continue like with all of the previous steps again, build the container again from that previous tag and everything. But when it's time to actually verify everything, right? verify all the metadata, metadata that was just collected, we see that, well, uh, internal verification didn't pass for this one because there was a commit that wasn't supposed to be there. Right. So uh, basically the the goal of Intoto is to detect if there's any breakage in this paper trail. If something happened in between that shouldn't have happened, Intoto is able to detect it. It actually prints a very user-friendly trace that says like, here's where we started. We started with this code changes and eventually I got into this commit and I couldn't make it into the tag because there's no link that connects one and the other. Um, Let's fast forward. Now, this is the result of, uh, again, a lot of work from uh, John Rui and Alan. Um, this was also something that uh, we're very happy to do if you're a student or somebody interested in participating in Google Storm of Code. We started this particular demo and this particular extension to trace uh, GitHub operations more granularly as a Google Storm of, uh, of Code. And uh, yeah, I think, it, I think it went very well. This is one of the demos that will be shown today. Uh, now, this is the state of Intoto. This is what you can do right now. I'll let my uh, colleague uh, Aditya talk about what the future holds. Uh, hi. So, Intoto is primarily a specification that we've, you know, th there are a number of implementations that we manage. We've, we maintain four implementations and, well, four different languages. And, and the specification itself can be extended using what we call ITs or Intoto enhancements. And uh, you know, a good chunk of these end up being implemented as well in one or more of the aforementioned implementations. So uh, we've got implementations in Python, Go, Java, and Rust. Uh, the Python is, uh, implementation is a reference implementation. It, we hit the 1.0 milestone uh, back in, I think, late 2020. And uh, you know, that's the one where we make stability guarantees and things like that. And the Go implementation is our slightly more experimental implementation. And that's where a lot of the newer features and newer ITs get implemented before you know, making their way to the Python implementation. Uh, the Java implementation and Rust implementations are a little less feature complete, but uh, they're important for integrations with things like uh, Jenkins. And, on, and the Rust implementation in particular is used with the reproducible builds project uh, for integrations with things like Rebuilderty. So we've had a number of ITs that have been accepted. We've got several more that are currently in draft status. Uh, I'm going to talk about a few of the key ITs here. IT2 is one that describes how we can use another CNCF project, our Intoto sister project, Tough, uh, as a root of trust for Intoto. And what, what this allows us to do is to securely distribute not just the artifact, but the metadata, in total metadata captured for that artifact using tough properties. It also helps us you know, distribute things like uh, the keys used to verify in total supply chain securely and helps identify you know, which batch of in total metadata must be trusted for a particular artifact and things like that. And this isn't theoretical. Uh, this has been implemented and it's been used in production for years over at Datadog. Uh, I3 is, I2 is like Sisterite, which is informational and contains all the details of Datadog specific implementation of Tough and Intoto in their pipelines. Uh, we have I4, which enables uh, abstract artifacts in Intoto. We just saw that in action actually in the demo that uh, Henry and Alan put together to capture things like, you know, GitHub specific objects and not just you know, Git specific objects and uh, recording containers and things like that. Uh, it's also been implemented, uh, we've also used IT4 to do things like uh, look deeper within files rather than just at the file level. Like for example, uh, we've had situations where 
there was a config file that needed to be modified, right? Uh, and the modification needed to affect just like one specific part of it. And so we, we could use Intoto to validate that some fields that weren't supposed to be modified weren't, you know, modified. Like we, did, we didn't want the base image, for example, to be changed in that particular instance to something that's more vulnerable and things like that. Uh, I six. This is, I think, the one that's really like opened Intoto up and enabled it to become like the common link with a bunch of other software supply chain security projects. It allows for defining more generalized attestations. Uh, we've we've uh, got a number of like we're we've, it's 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 a little in flux, but we've got a number that are like already being used, like the Salsa ones, and you can start emitting Cyclone DX and, uh, as, as an intro attestation as well. Uh, we've, that's, the spec, that, that's the Salsa provenance spec, but we've had a number of them come in, like link, the, the original intro links, SPDX, Cyclone DX, uh, Sky, and Runtime Trace Predicates, which was talked about yesterday if someone was here at SecCon, but uh, yeah, and we've, to find a new process for uh, how folks can contribute to these predicate types. Uh, it's a standalone IT9, IT and we've got a number of people in the broader and total community helping you know, uh, provide feedback to new attestation types and help curate what uh, type of attestations we need to for, for a particular use case and things like that. Uh, IT7 is the one that added support for X509 certificates to Intoto. This enables integrations with things like uh, FullCO, SixSource FullCO, or Spiffy Spire, and any other standalone PKI setups that folks have and want to use in Toto with. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Spire integration is already live in our Go implementation. As I, as I noted, that was the experimental one, so that's, that's ready to use there, but yeah. Uh, so I'm going to like wrap up sort of with saying that a lot of this wouldn't be possible without the broader and total community with like, you know, the multiple lights they've authored and the contributions to the various implementations and new attestation types that are coming up. And I want to talk, uh, we, we, we want to show another pre-recorded demo that displays in Toto's integration with Keylime, another CNCF project. So let me just pull that video up. Um, well, he's pulling it up. Keylime is a system that uh, essentially does hardware-based uh, tracking of whatever's running on your cloud. So you can easily connect these two projects together and say, well, I don't want to run anything that doesn't uh, have any total policy attached to it and that I don't know where it came from. I, I want to know that every single line of code running on my infrastructure was reviewed by, say, two people or things of that nature. I'll let Mark uh, describe the rest. Hello, Intoto community. My name is Mark Pistavros. I'm a software engineer uh, with Red Hat in the Office of the CTO's Emerging Technology Security Team. And I'm here to talk about the work I've been doing around end-to-end -end supply chain with Intoto and Keyline. Uh, I'd like to start by talking about the supply chain security ecosystem as it stands. Um, for the past year and a half, there's been a lot of great work on tools like Intoto, Tough, and SigStore around the beginning of supply chains. Um, these tools do a great job uh, of recording, attesting, and propagating information about code origin. Uh, and this makes information about source code and how things are compiled very easily accessible and available, which means that if you have some random binary that uses these tools and its supply chain, uh, a consumer of that binary can have very high confidence about how that code originated and where it came from, which is a really cool story. On the other side, we have a great story for the end of supply chains as well, which is Keyline. Uh, if you're not familiar with Keyline, it's a CNCF hosted project that provides a highly scalable remote boot attestation and runtime integrity measurement solution. Keyline enables users to monitor remote nodes using a hardware-based cryptographic route of trust. So what does this mean in simple English? Well, Keylang is a tool set that allows end users to monitor what's happening on some client system and to attest that what's happening on that system, the things that are running, machine state, matches what was expected. And that guarantee, that, that guarantee is backed using a hardware root of trust, which is pretty great. That's a very strong guarantee that what's happening on uh, that client system is exactly as expected. The issue is these two, two stories are not that well connected. Um, with Intoto, SigStore, and Tuff, their chain response they kind of end after distribution. And there's really no runtime guarantee that running code matches what was compiled. You know, uh, that that's kind of missing from from that chain. On the other side, Keyline does provide that, but uh, it still relies on user specified policy to enforce uh, its hardware its guarantees. And these policies, there's not really a clear story for where they come from. 
there's they could they could come from the operating system vendor, for example, which might cover sort of the base layer OS image, but that may not cover what you want to run on top of your base OS. And that's what I've been working on, kind of connecting these two sides of the story with this with what tool I'm calling the supply chain bridge. And this is the missing middle. This connects the two parts of the supply chain together. You can see that happening in this diagram on the left uh, that's visualized with, let's say you have a GitHub Actions pipeline that takes your source code, uses the wonderful tools in Toto and Sixtore to sign and upload uh, signing evidence to, to a transparency log, uh, produces a bunch of artifacts. So in addition to compiling a binary, you also get signatures, SBOM, the link files from Intoto. Now this will be attached to a GitHub release. The supply chain bridge will take uh, the signing materials that are now publicly available, uh, verify them, and, and kind of attest that the provenance of a specific binary makes sense and, and is, is correct. And once those checks pass, then it will forward uh, ha the hash of that binary to Keyline, which can then monitor, uh, monitor for it on end user hardware, which then closes the loop and creates a continuous chain of trust uh, that's end to end, which is really the goal from source code all the way to hardware. And that's what we're gonna sh what I'm gonna show you today. Uh, to facilitate this demo, I have two repositories to show you. The first is supply chain pipeline demo. This is just a fairly basic repository that kind of, that is sort of a prototypical example of what a uh, good supply chain security practices look like. It's got a very basic hello go binary uh, as part of it, but more interestingly, it also has some Intoto keys and most crucially a workflow that makes use of the wonderful supply chain tool available to us. So it compiles, th this workflow will compile the Go binary and attest or record that uh, that compilation happening with the Toto, producing a link file. Um, and it will also sign and upload that binary to SIGSTORE using the wonderful GH Action SIGSTORE Python action by trail of bits. Um, this produces a lot of signing materials and these signing materials are attached to a GitHub release. Um, you can actually see if we go back to the releases page, that is in fact the case. The latest release has not just the binary, but also certificates, signatures, and link files, which is great. This is this is the information now publicly available on, on the internet and people can see it. Um, the second repository is the Keylime Supply Chain Bridge itself. And this tool uh, consumes that GitHub release, um, consumes the, the signed materials from it, uh, verifies them, and takes the binary uh, that uh, that is part of that release and takes a hash and forwards it onto Keyline, which connects the two, uh, connects Keyline to the rest of the supply chain ecosystem. And we're going to show it in action right now. Um, what we're seeing here um, on the left side of your screen, you have, we have a, we have two virtual machines. On the left side is one of them called Keyline Fedora 1. And on the right side is a second called Keyline Fedora 2. Um, Keyline Fedora 1 is running two separate things. It's running the Keyline Verifier uh, in the middle here and the Keyline Registrar on the bottom. And then Keyline Fedora 2 on the right is running the Keyline agent. The, the verifier and registrar on the left running on Keyline Fedora 1 are the sort of command and control aspects uh, which monitor and and, uh, and orchestrate the agent. So, so this is an agent that's working on a separate machine. And the agent is what does the job of hardware attestation and making sure that everything is, looks good on a client machine. So Keyline Fedora 2 is the VM that we're going to be monitoring today. Uh, to facilitate this demo, uh, I have a few files on disk to show. Uh, I have a lallist.txt. This is a keyline policy that corresponds to the base OS image of uh, keyline Fedora 2. So this has you know, all the system files and whatever else that is part of that, that base OS image. Additionally, I also have the HelloGo binary that we uh, that we saw uh, present on both machines. Both HelloGo binaries are there. Um, and also we finally have the keyline supply chain bridge, which is the repository that, uh, of, the, of, the, of the tool that I, that I wrote. And we're going to see that in action right now. Uh, I'm going to run it, uh, do Keylight Supply Chain Bridge slash main.py. We have to write a number of inputs. I'm going to give it uh, an owner and repository on GitHub. So this corresponds to MSRO slash supply chain pipeline demo. So I'm pointing it towards uh, this repository. And what's going to do is it's going to look at this repository, find the latest GitHub release, and then grab signing materials from that release and, and then verify them. Uh, in addition, I specify a local path to a binary. In this, in this case, I'm going to specify hello go. Um, this is not uh, required. You can leave this field out and it will just grab the binary from the release. But in this case, I do have it on disk, so I'm going I'm to have that uh, entry there. Uh, I also specify a destination path. Uh, this is where the binary will end up on the machine that will be monitored, which in this case is this binary right here. So that's uh, just at root hello go as well. Um, and finally, I'm going to give it the allow list, which is the base layer OS policy. Um, I'm also going to specify dash S and dash I to indicate that I'd like to do uh, six or in total checks. Uh, when I run this, uh, we're going to get a bunch of output and we're going to see what that looks like. 
once we ran it, uh, you're going to see a number of things happen. Uh, we are verifying the local binary at root hello go right here. I got signed materials from MSR slash supply chain pipeline demo. Uh, we are going and we're going to do a bunch of checks against that. We're going to do basic signature validation, which did pass. We're going to verify uh, against six stores, so presence of valid signature and inclusion proof. And it looks like that passed as well. And we're going to run against in total, and it looks like that passed as well. Um, at the end of this, uh, since we run all these checks, we can reasonably confident that this hash of the binary uh, is correct and is uh, and has provenance that we trust. So we're going to then forward this hash over to uh, Keyline. We're going to take the existing allowless that's present at root allowless text. We're going to create a new Keyline policy that has this hash. And in fact, if we look, we do have this policy. And if we print this out, we're going to see a, a bunch of hashes in addition to in addition to, at the very end, root hello go, which is the uh, which is the hash of the binary that we just compiled, which is great. So that means that this keylight policy now has information about our verified binary. The last step is to actually run keyline, and we are going to do that now uh, with an invocation of the keyline tenant. We are going to provide it with our new keyline policy.json, and we are going to not delete, we are going to add this policy. And this is going to invoke Keylime to do a bunch of things. It's going to set up the agent. And the agent is now set up with this policy. And it's now checking, constantly checking the integrity of Keylime Fedora 2. Um, and it's saying that everything is good. Uh, they check the measurement list on agent uh, text loops around. And if we keep seeing that, that means that everything is in good shape. And to demonstrate that things are working as intended, we are going to run hello go. By doing so, we ran our code and it seemed like everything is fine. Everything continues to work as expected, which is great because that means that our uh, provenance information that started from source code made it all the way down to hardware and is being reflected when we're monitoring it. Uh, but we can actually go further than this. We can, uh, we can show this working incorrectly. So let's say we modify hello go. Let's say we do echo. Let's say we add this text, the end of hello go. Once we do and we run hello go, we're going to see that uh, Keyline actually recognized it and it tripped it and it tells us that uh, root hello go doesn't match the expected hash. It, in fact, is different, which is great. That's exactly what we want. It means that Keyline worked as intended. And that's it. That's the demo uh, showing that product information from source mail all the way down to uh, to to the end hardware. So this is a pretty cool demo in my opinion, but there's definitely some work to be done. Uh, in the future, there's definitely some work to be done around making this more seamless and more usable. Um, and there's definitely conversations happening in the Keyline and Toto communities to upstream parts of this tool uh, into the main code bases, uh, which would be pretty cool. And I'd like to continue doing that work in the future. Thank you very much. So uh, this is all very exciting. Again, uh, part of what I, I like about Intoto is that it really does play very well with uh, all of the like, software supply chain uh, technologies or pretty much security products out there. Um, we actually have a lot of uh, integrations with other uh, parts of the CNCF landscape. You just saw something with Keyline, Tough is a sister project. Uh, we have pretty much been uh, the home of Salsa since its inception. If you if you look at the salsa provenance at the station at the very top, it says in total statement version 0 0.1. That's uh, that's how we uh, we we work together to make things happen. Cyclone DX, Beefy Spire, you saw the extensions. Uh, beyond on the open source ecosystem, we are also a technique to say verify reproducible builds. You can collect provenance at stations from different builders and agree and check if they agree on what the reproducibility the status of a project is. And well. You, can, you will find us in many, many places. Uh, we are a very uh, welcoming community for you to try to explore and experiment with uh, different uh, software supply chain uh, solutions. Uh, please, uh, well, I invite everybody to join us. There's uh, many ways to reach us. And uh, even though there's all, only a minute left, you can al also hack with us tomorrow in the Toto uh, Tough and Six Door Contrib Fest. I think uh, 
that's a great way to get started in space. We are three sister projects that are trying to set the tone for software supply chain security in the coming uh, years. And thank you. I think we have very little time for questions, if, if not at all. Five minutes? Okay, great. It's actually more of a clarifying question in the demo when he actually made the change to the hello world to like hello evil or something and apparently Keylime uh, policy engine caught it and it says the hash was mis mismatched. Did it stop execution? Because I did not see hello evil come in on the... Right, so my understanding, and that's a little bit more on the Keylime side, the default is to just let it go and warn you. So the kernel actually lets the execution go and then it tells uh, like the other part of Keylime to like tell you that, that that happened. It should be possible, as far as I'm aware, to change that behavior to, instead of warning you, just killing the process. I was just uh, wondering if the, the guy was talking really fast. I was hoping I could get the uh, GitHub or, or his, his GitHub um, account that he was showing that demo. I, I was looking online at the event schedule. I think I think the PDFs or the presentation. Sorry, will be I, I think the speakers are like facing that way. I <laughs> I couldn't hear you. But my bad. Um, does the in, uh, individual that did the demo? Uh, to, do you happen to know his uh, his GitHub uh, oh, URL? His, uh, GitHub handle. Yeah. He's Mark Bestabros at uh, Red Hat. So I think his GitHub handle is M Bestabros. Like M Best. M, M B E S T R V like, like. Sorry, my accent. Uh, v uh, R O S. Thank you. You kind of catch it. Great. Hey, I have a uh, question about how. Um, precise the layouts for Intoto need to be for verifying um, what comes, or verifying what you've produced. So in, in particular, I'm thinking of like two different scenarios. Um, if you're using some sort of ephemeral key generation, do you need to know what the keys are in advance in those layouts? Um, or if you have a, uh, the other scenario, if you have a multi-person team and you don't necessarily know who on that team is gonna perform a particular action, um, do you need to know that in advance in those layouts as well? So let me, let me see if I can rephrase the question. Uh, basically, how granular do you need to be in your layouts? And also, in particular, what's up with the identities of the actors? Like, probably you don't know beforehand who's going to merge, but you know that uh, somebody needs to merge, I don't know, from that company or something like that. Yes, there's semantics to, like, there's three semantics that help you in Intoto. The first one, it's a little bit more about the granularity. You can essentially say, I don't know how this part of the supply chain works, but I know these people will give me a layout to describe it. So you can make like recursive calls into Intoto. And that allows you to like abstract out parts of the supply chain that you don't know. Maybe you're like a PM, you, don't, you really don't know what's going under the hood, but you know the team that's going to be working on that. The other one is you can actually say, uh, give it a, a set of keys and a threshold. To, so you say, I don't know, 10 people are going to be working on this and I need at least two of those people to give me evidence of a merge. Um, I don't know which of them, but I want two of them. And the last one is the I7, which is the one that allows you to work with identity providers. So say if you're using Keyless and Fusio, you say, well, I don't know what key is going to be there, but I, I want it to be from, I don't know, this email account. And it also works very well with Spiffy Inspire when you have ephemeral workers. Uh, so you say, well, I just want a cert from this chain rooted in this trust. It's going to be some worker on some machine in the cloud. I don't know exactly which, but uh, just verify this chain of trust all the way to this root and with this like particular constraints on the cert chain. Does that kind of awesome? Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Then, uh, okay. Wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you.